Writing clear directions. How to make something. Writing clear directions that other people can follow may not be as easy as you think. Using vague words, leaving a step out, or not listing the correct materials will probably lead to frustration on the part of the person trying to follow your directions and a less than satisfying product. Let's build a peanut butter and jelly sandwich as an example of writing clear directions. The first step is to list all of the materials needed. When you're writing instructions, you must first be familiar with the task personally. Get all the tools and supplies you'll need and lay them out in roughly the order you'll need them. Write down everything needed. When you write your instructions, you may want to include a list of tools or materials that are necessary to complete the task. For our peanut butter and jelly sandwich example, list one jar of peanut butter, one jar of jelly, one plate, two slices of bread, and one spoon. Have we forgotten anything? That's right, a knife. It'll be hard to make a sandwich without anything to spread the peanut butter and jelly with. Be very detailed. The next step is to perform the task yourself. Even if you've successfully completed the task several times, it's still a good idea to walk yourself through it before you write down your instructions so you don't forget anything. If you're familiar with the task, you may be prone to taking shortcuts, so make sure you don't skip any steps or omit any information your reader may not have. If you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, for example, notice what you did first. Did you take the bread out of the bag? Do you lay the bread slices on the plate? Everything is important. Assume the person reading your instructions has never done this before. Make a detailed outline. Divide the steps into baby tasks. Don't do too much at once. As you perform the task, take a moment to write down what you've done. This helps you keep the instructions in logical order. If you're doing the task as you write down the steps, you know exactly what needs to be done and when. Also, include any safety warnings or tips. It is best to start every step with an action verb like spread the peanut butter or open the jar. Number the steps in order on the outline. For example, one, take two slices of bread out of the bag. Two, lay the bread on the plate. Three, take the lid off the peanut butter jar and so on. Define your audience. Instructions for the same task may be written in different ways depending on who will be reading and attempting to follow your instructions. You'll be writing differently for kids than you will be for adults. Consider the reason as well. The instructions for kids working on a project will be different from the instructions for parents helping their kids with the project. For example, if a parent is helping with the sandwich, the directions might say, ask an adult to open the jar. Also, add in some pictures at each step so even if a person cannot read or speaks a different language, they could still do the project. Draft a short introduction. The introduction tells your reader what your instructions will enable them to do and what the final outcome will be if they complete all the instructions. For example, if you're explaining how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you could mention that peanut butter and jelly is a wholesome, simple option that kids love for lunch or an afternoon snack. Keep in mind that most people will skip the introduction, or at most, skim it. So don't include vital information or key warnings in the introduction. If you included any important warning in the introduction, be sure to include it in your steps as well, in case someone skipped the introduction. When you are finished, read the instructions out loud. Did you miss anything? Was everything clear? The final test is to ask someone to follow your directions without you helping them. Watch what happens and then make any changes needed to be sure the directions you have written are simple and crystal clear.